Hey, greetings, everyone. Lieutenant Colonel Allen West here, and welcome to the Steadfast and Loyal Podcast. You gotta light them up before they burn it down. Better dig deep and put them in the ground. But on their hands, they're held back. Well, hello, Patriots. Trebo, President, United Patriot Coin. I'm sure a lot of you have heard the story on how a $20 gold coin 100 years ago would buy a gentleman's really nice suit. And at the time we're making this video, gold sitting around $1,912 an ounce would still buy a gentleman's nice suit. But I want to take you back, maybe not that far ago, a time most of you should be able to remember the year 2000. Gold was $275 an ounce, which means if you invested a million dollars in gold, you would be able to purchase 3,636 ounces of gold. Patriots today, at roughly $1,912 an ounce, that would be worth $6.9 million today. Just another way to encourage you to be your own bank. Stay safe. Be prepared, Patriots. You know, we are now officially into the primary election season for 2024. We've had the Iowa caucuses, which are a little bit different. But you had the first in the nation primary in New Hampshire. Now, <laughs> there was no big deal on the Democrat side. I mean, Joe Biden wasn't even on the ballot. They had to do a write-in campaign for Joe Biden. I think it was very interesting. The uh, congressman from Minnesota, I'm sorry, Dean Phillips, ended up getting, I believe, 21 to 22 percent, somewhere in there. I think that shocked a lot of people. But what I really want to focus on when we talk about primary elections, and first of all, everyone needs to really kind of understand. Right now, we have two political parties in the United States of America. That's the party of the jackass, which is the Democrat Party. That's their symbol is a donkey, okay? That's, that's an honest assessment. And then the party of the pachyderms, that's the Republican Party, the elephant. Those are the two teams. A primary election is really about folks that are in one of those, on one of those two teams, one, in one of those two camps, deciding who's going to be on their team. You remember like, kind of like, you know, when you were growing up playing a little pickup game or whatever, you had two team captains and a bunch of folks out there and they pick one, then he pick one. They pick one, they pick one. That, that's really what primary is about. It's about you selecting your fighters, you selecting your gladiators who are going to the arena of politics and doing the battle for you based upon your principles and values as you believe. And, and the platforms that are developed in those respective parties from the precinct level, the county level, all the way up to the state level, all the way up to the national party level. But what New Hampshire showed us is that there's a flaw in this thing. There, there, there's, there's a little bit of a chasm there because it's called closed primaries versus open primaries. New Hampshire was an open primary. And what does that mean in New Hampshire? It means that anybody can vote in anybody's primary. Now, I know I can hear people already out there saying, you know, we need to have open primaries. Everybody needs to be that. I disagree. Because if you are non-party affiliated, NPEA, independent, whatever you want to call yourself. You declared that. You declared that you're going to separate yourself from one of those two political parties. You're going to disenfranchise yourself, self-disenfranchising, from one of those two political parties. It's like 
someone has said, here, come over to my house for this barbecue. And you have been going to this barbecue. Then all of a sudden you decide that you don't want to go to the barbecue. You have disinvited yourself. Never invite me again to your barbecue. But then all of a sudden you tell the people that are putting the barbecue together that you want to be involved in planning the menu for the barbecue. After you disinvited yourself from the barbecue to say, I never want to be invited back. Well, if you disinvite yourself from the barbecue, you don't get to say what the menu is. That's just life. And I think we have to start getting people to understand there are consequences and ramifications to the decisions that you make. No one held a gun up to anybody's head and said, you must now become an independent. Well, the party's left me. Okay, I got it. So you can either stay and continue to go to the barbecue, and if you don't like the, the brisket, you can you know, maybe cook some different brisket and bring it. And just the same with the political party, you can become involved and engaged, and you can do what is necessary to help shape those issues, platforms. But to say that I'm disinviting myself, disenfranchising myself, but yet I still want to come in and have my voice heard, I got a problem with that. And here is the problem. Because in New Hampshire, what we ended up seeing was that a certain presidential candidate, well, on the Republican side, there's only two, so you know what I'm talking about, Nikki Haley. She ended up, I mean, wants to be the Republican presidential nominee for president, Republican presidential nominee for president. But yet the polling shows, the exit polling shows that 70 to 75 percent of the people that voted for her in the primary in New Hampshire, which is an open primary, were not Republicans. Hmm. So you want to have this party nomination, but yet you're courting people from outside the party to get this party's nomination, but these people aren't part of that party. And I believe it was 45 or so percent of these people said they wouldn't vote for you in a general election. So you're courting them to help you get the nomination, but then if you get the nomination, you go to the general election, they're not going to vote for you. See what I'm saying? That's why we, we have to close these primaries. So all this nefarious activity, the chicanery doesn't happen. And I can tell you right now, we're starting to see that here in Texas. You know, our primary uh, early voting will commence on the 20th of February. It will run to the 1st of March, cease on that Friday. And then Super Tuesday, the first Tuesday in March, the 5th of March, that is the election day. And we already are seeing Democrats out there saying, Vote in the Republican primary. Vote against constitutional conservative candidates. Because in Texas we have an open primary. What is even more kind of disturbing is that the Nikki Haley campaign, there was a memo that was found talking about them courting Democrats into Texas to vote in the Texas primary. That was reported by the Texas Tribune, which is a leftist site. Patrick Svitek, S-V-I-T-E-K. So you want to be the Republican presidential nominee, but yet the reason why you're staying in is because you want to court people outside of the party that you want the nomination for to get the nomination, but yet those people come to general election aren't going to vote for you. They just see you as the means by which they can muck up the waters in the Republican Party. Now, there's an interesting thing that is going to be on the Republican ballot here in the state of Texas. There are 13 different propositions that came from the last state Republican executive committee meeting for the Republican Party of Texas. And oh, by the way, for all you people that think Republicans are racist, the Republican Party of Texas was founded on Independence Day. July the 4th of 1867 by 150 black men in Houston. At the same time, the Democrat Party was creating the Ku Klux Klan. 
I just thought I'd get that little historical side note in there. But anyhow, the Republican Party of Texas, the State Repo Republican Executive Committee, came up with the 13 propositions, which will help them to shape the legislative priorities that will be developed going into the state convention this summer, which will help to guide the legislative priorities that hopefully Republicans will take up in our next legislative session, which will be next year. But the thing is that if we allow the Democrats to jump in and vote in our Republican primary here in the state of Texas, because we have open primaries, one of the ballot propositions is the closed primaries. So what do you think will happen if all of a sudden a bunch of people that aren't Republicans jump into the Republican primary here in the state of Texas and click no? And the next thing you know, that ballot proposition fails. And everyone says, well, see, in the Republican primary, they said that they did not want to have closed primaries. But then maybe you go back and you find out that a good majority of those votes, those no votes, came from people that weren't even Republicans. See, that's why we need to have closed primaries. See, I think one of the things that's hurting the, the, the Republican Party, first and foremost, the Republican Party really does not do very well in primary elections. They don't get out there and strongly participate. Lots of times they don't even understand what a primary election is. I give you a great case in point. I remember when I was running for governor here, our campaign office would get calls from people that were saying, you know, you need to drop out of the race, Colonel, because if you stay in the race, you're going to delude the vote and Beto O'Rourke is going to win. <laughs> yeah. That's reflective of the lack of civic understanding that we have here in Texas, maybe in some other states, but definitely with Republicans because people did not understand what happens in the primary. They thought that everybody's there. Now, there's other states, you know, Louisiana, some other states have jungle primaries, completely different animal. But what we're talking about is closing primaries so that only Republicans can come in and vote. If Louisiana wants to change, I'm sure that they have a process by which they have to, you know, have that brought up. It has to be passed in their legislature, has to be voted on by the people, I would think, maybe. But that's what we're trying to do here. So what ends up happening is that here in the state of Texas, you know, Democrats will jump in, vote and muddy the waters in the Republican primary. And you get someone that is more so kowtowing to the other side, which means you have a Texas state house disappointing Democrats to be committee chairman. You have a Texas state house with a majority of Republicans, Republican speaker of the house, that couldn't even pass legislation to say that we do not want to have foreign adversarial entities in countries, namely China, purchasing land in the state of Texas. That failed. Or creating a border security unit. That failed. Or even we have Republicans here in the state of Texas. I think we had one, not two, but three, but I think four special sessions last year so that we could get educational freedom passed. Still fail. Because we don't, no, no, I'm not talking about purists. I'm talking about people that understand the Constitution. The other side doesn't care about the Constitution. I mean, look at Joe Biden. They, they, the, the, the left doesn't care about the Constitution. They care about rule. They care about power. They care about control. They're totalitarians. But there has to be a political party in the United States of America that's focused on the Constitution and the principles and values thereof, the rule of law. That's what I'm talking about. There has to be a political party that is focused on liberty and freedom and individual rights. That's what I'm talking about. But when you have these open primaries, you allow people who don't believe in those things to come in and participate in your election. And 
you're watered down. So yes, I, I support closing primaries. I will be voting on my ballot in this March, the primary Republican election on those ballot propositions to close primaries in Texas. Because I don't want to see the other side having to say so. And again, if you're not party affiliated, you made that decision. You checked that box. So there are consequences and ramifications thereof. Now what you have to do is start looking, reading, understanding, comprehending what are your philosophies of governance as an independent. I know that there's a group out there called No Labels. I remember once upon a time in the United States of America we had a political party called No Nothings. K-N-O-W. That political party today is probably the Democrat Party. They don't know nothing. N-U-T-H-I-N. But we are not talking about a purity test. We're not talking about purists. We're talking about following the established rule of law. And I think that's what the Republican Party needs to get back to. We can have healthy debate. We can develop our respective propositions that go before our Republican primary voters. And please come out to vote in the primary or you abdicate your voice. And we can have that debate at the Republican Party of Texas convention or at their state Republican executive committee meetings, which are your representatives. We can have those uh, debates in our county executive committees about where we stand on the issues what our platforms will be, what our priorities will be. But our priorities should be focused on liberty, freedom, and individual rights. Our fundamentals, our blocking and tackling. You know, Super Bowl's coming up. Let me ask you this. Let me talk about open primaries and closed primaries. The Kansas City Chiefs have the ball. They're in their huddle. Do you think the Kansas City Chiefs are going to look over to someone from San Francisco and their defense and say, hey, man, come on over into our huddle. Listen to us call our play. And maybe you can tell us, you know, what play you think we should run. No. They have closed huddles in football. There's offense and defense. The offensive players don't get to go over and find out what defensive scheme they're going to run. The responsibility of the quarterback is to come up there and look across and see that defensive scheme. Maybe he has to call a, an audible. Remember Peyton Manning? Omaha, Omaha. But even still, the defense can shift back around. But when you are having open primaries, and mainly these are Democrats coming over to Republican primaries. I mean, Republicans won't even come out and vote in their own primaries. So I don't have any concern about them going and voting in a Democrat primary. I remember Rush Limbaugh talked about Operation Chaos back during the Hillary Clinton campaign. But other than that, it, that dog don't hunt. It's just not happening. But the Marxists, the leftists, the progressive socialists, the agents of chaos and confusion, they will create that within your own party. And sadly, we have those quote unquote Republican politicians like Liz Cheney, Nikki Haley, that want to invite them into our huddle so they can hear the plays we're calling and give them an opportunity to maybe decide what players and plays we're having. It's not about partisan politics. It's about right now there's a line that's been drawn in the sand. Either you stand on the side of the rule of law, our fundamental principles and values as a constitutional republic, not a democracy. We can have a debate about that later. Or you don't. If you have made that decision, 
then you have placed yourself squarely in one side or the other. If you have decided that you don't want to make that decision, you still have made a decision. And I got to tell you, it's kind of like my dad used to say when I was growing up down south. The only thing in the middle of the road is road kill. And even the Bible says in Revelation that you're either hot or you're cold. If you're lukewarm, I'll spew you from my mouth. So let's start making a decision about our philosophy of governance, what we believe in, what we're going to support. And as for me, I support closed primaries. Because I think that there's a camp out there that wants to be steadfast and loyal to the longest running constitutional republic that the world has ever known. And there's a camp that does not want to be. Choose for yourselves today, as Joshua said in chapter 24. Because that time for choosing is coming in this election cycle. Before they burn it down.